Hello guys, welcome to our show. Today we discuss about ACO. We are going to touch ACO and even more we are going to uncover 26 rules uh, that can help you to get great results. I'm so excited to discuss this topic with Michael Buzinski. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah, doing great. Um, love it. Love, love this topic because I want to know more about SEO. I found that every single day I can learn something new, change approaches because SEO is a quickly uh, changing world. We need to adapt to something new that uh, uh, come every single day and Google updates like plus seven, seven thousand times a year. It's a lot. So, Michael, before we start, just tell more about yourself, experience, background, about your book, business, anything that can help listeners to learn more about you sure uh so i've been in marketing for just about 30 years uh and um over the years i it's been a full-time thing for me and then it's been a part-time thing for the last 17 years i've owned a media and marketing firm are technically two companies now uh and i i fell in love with seo probably really mid to late 2000s when I just realized the power of intent. And so throughout the years, you know, we've been innovating uh, search engine optimization services for service-based clients. Um, and for the last 17 years, or now, now for the last about 15, 15 years, we've been, you know, serving a lot, like hundreds of companies in SEO over the years. And so um, I bring that into uh, a book that I called the rule of 26. And that's, um, basically a three step process of doubling website revenue. And so I bring that love for SEO into that because it is such a high, uh, return on investment when you make it work for you. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Okay. Let's talk about, uh, this 26 rules. Can you share with us what kind yeah, of, yeah, sure. So the rule 26, yeah. Yeah, so the rule oh, yeah. of 26 states that if you increase your unique traffic by 26%, your conversion rate by 26%, and your average revenue per client coming from your website by 26%, you'll get 100% more revenue coming from your website. Mm -hmm. You know, I found one trap. You know, you mentioned about traffic, but I see when the masters chase traffic, for example, they open SEMrush, iHrefs, Google Keyword Planner, and they see volume, you know, they see volume, want to get this traffic. And in the first, it's hard. It's really hard to get this traffic because you need to compete with big companies. For example, if I take SEO, I need to compete with Neil Patel in the top 10 results, Moz, uh, many other great resources that deserve to get this ranking positions. But in the second, uh, it doesn't mean that I can sell by having this keyword in the top 10. So it's hard and uh, it's hard to convert. Can you tell about creating the right strategy? Because you mentioned about yeah. traffic and you can increase sales. I think sales uh, is yeah, the end of all results to get more sales. Any tips about that? So when you're talking about highly competitive keywords like SEO, mm -hmm. you don't want to rank for SEO. Because your intent, if, if you're if you're an SEO provider, okay, I don't want to rank for SEO because SEO by itself is just somebody just puts SEO in there in the uh, search bar, they're gonna get they're looking for information. Well, I'm not an information hub. I'm a service hub. I mm -hmm. need keywords that are related to a transactional intent or a commercial intent. So we have the four intents of SEO, right? We have navigation navigational, right? We have informational, commercial, and transactional. So commercial is when we're looking at what are my options to buy something that is related to S. We'll, we'll just use SEO as the example related to helping me do SEO, right? And then that's when you start competing with, uh, your, your Neil, Neil Patel is more of informational, right? Like how do I rank for dot, dot, dot. You can go to Neil Patel. He'll tell you that stuff all day long. He wants those DIYers to come into his circle, right? But if you're looking for the done for you services, that's what you want to offer, then you want to be you want to be very specific of where you're offering 
your services and then turn around and be very specific about what services they would be looking for and what keywords they're going to be looking to use to find people like you because they don't know your name, right? Mm -hmm. So if I would say best SEO service in Chicago, Illinois, right? I know that that intent in that in that keyword phrase is very transactional, right? It could be and and or commercial, depending on you know what else they've they've searched it before then. But when you've done that, you've now narrowed down where they're looking to get their service from, right? They're looking for somebody local when they do that, right? They're looking for somebody in Chicago. They want they want somebody that's not necessarily across the world or anything like that. They're looking for a service specifically, and they're looking for the best ones, right? So if we if we optimize for those keywords in say a blog, and maybe we we are going. What are the five top SEO services in Chicago, right? And we happen to be one of them. Okay, great, right? You're giving the people options, which is a commercial intent. That's much better than going SEO because what am I actually searching for for SEO? And SEO is an acronym that in other industries means other things. So you see with the difference in the, the quality of traffic I'm going to get between just using SEO versus best SEO service in Chicago. Yeah, what about pillar topics? For example, Google can understand content uh, if you have uh, pillar topics, I mean like similar topics to your uh, transactional or e-commerce intent. And for example, that's why we usually write blog posts. We can help like to create brand awareness. We can tell Google that uh, our website is related to this niche. So... Uh, you mentioned that, yeah, of course, I, I understand. We need to have e-commerce keywords. We need to have them because it can help to sell more than mm. a, a bottom, uh, I mean, like to, uh, top funnel. But yeah, what about pillar topics? How to create the right strategy considering pillar topics that might sell, but not like uh, bottom funnel? <laughs> so, there, yeah, like your bottom of the funnel is your informational, right? And so when mm. people are like, how to, um, where can't, you know, um, the how to's are a lot of informational, right? So the mm -hmm. what and, and how, uh, type of questions are going to be people who are in the research phase, which are informational, right? Mm -hmm. If they're, if they're in the navigational, they're in the really low, uh, or they're really, they're really low in the, in the funnel because they know where they want to go, right? Where is the dot, 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 right? And um, when you're in that middle of the funnel, that commercial, they're looking for comparisons. So what makes a good SEO? What makes a great plumber? Or how do I choose the best plumber to fix X, Y, Z, right? Now they're looking for a service, but they're still looking for like how to find that service, right? Where transactional is like I, uh, um, I emergency plumber in and whatever that area is, that's very transactional, right? I'm, I know what I'm looking for, when I'm looking for it and where I'm looking for it. And that's very transactional. So that's way down in that sales funnel as well. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about your book. You know, uh, I have a huge list of books that I must read, but I have uh, less time to read all these books, many great books. Uh, so I'm busy with many things to do, but I love reading books. I know it's important. Uh, it's my loving uh, content format because books are foundation. And for example, if I compare books to blog posts or audio podcasts, it takes like a few hours or a few days to create, uh, to write a blog post uh, or to record mm -hmm. podcasts, uh, film video. But book offers usually spent like <laughs> six months and year, you know, sometimes years. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Takes a story a about, yeah, uh, Lloyd Richards. He spent like 14 years to write a single book, 14 years. Then, uh, you know, it's interesting that uh, after that he published this book and couldn't sell this book 11 years. Then his daughter posted content on TikTok uh, in account with zero followers. This video became viral. Plus 50 million people watch this video. And today this book is bestseller on Amazon. So one single creative video beats a lot of marketing and sales channels. Uh, and uh, of course, I watch this video. I'm curious, you know, how to film this video. Uh, and, you know, on this video, you can find nice looking design, simple design. But, you know, it's like uh, honest story. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I got the feeling 
curiosity, you know, I wanna read this book. It's interesting how author can spend like 14 years to write a single book. So yeah, uh, uh, I just decided to share the story because of creativity, <laughs> uh, how you can uh, use different marketing channels. And I'm interested about your book. Can you tell uh, what kind of benefits I can get? My listeners can get by reading your book because, you know, we are busy people, but we yeah. love getting value. So tell benefits of reading your book. <laughs> sure. So, you know, everything you said there kind of lends to why I wrote the book the way I wrote it. So yeah. uh, specifically, it's a, it's about 100 pages. Okay. Just mm -hmm. over 100 pages printed. Okay. Um, I think it's 125 in the in the ebook, um, just because of the formatting and stuff like that. And I yeah. did that specifically because I know that business owners and marketing professionals are extremely busy and they do not need a lot of fluff. A friend of mine, uh, Mike, wrote a book, a, a marketing book, and it was like 200 and some odd pages. I read the whole entire book, um, uh, and it took me a lot, a lot, a long time to read it. But then when I synthesized it all. I found out that he could have wrote the book in about 40 pages, right? So that means that he mm -hmm. had 230 to 40 pages of fluff. And so this book yeah. is jam packed with just the facts. By 20 page 22, you already know what the rule 26 is. And the rest of the book and the rest of the uh, 80 pages are all about how to implement the rule of 26. So if you are a business owner who is looking to demystify uh, the, the approach to uh, website marketing, this book is for you. If you're a marketer looking for a process that streamlines uh, the, the way you look at KPIs, key performance indicators, this book is for you. Um, if you like complex KPIs and vanity KPIs and all that other stuff, this book's not for you. This is a book that's going to leverage your knowledge of website marketing to a point where you're going to be able to double the revenue coming out of your website. And the thing is, the Rule 26 is, is math-based, meaning that if you do it, it has to happen. There is no way around it. Not, it's not just this mystical rule I created. I did the math and said, what are the top? I wanted to see what how few KPIs could get down to doubling revenue of a website. I found the three that compound upon each other. That meaning that when you do the first one, you get 26% business if all the other things stay the same. You get the second one, you get 52%. That third one, though, you add that 26% there and you're looking at 78% more, right? No, you get 100% more, which means you leverage 22% more output because you add these three specific KPIs together. So if you're interested in, in increasing your website revenue, the rule 26 is definitely for you. Yeah, nice. Interesting. Of course, I'm interested. Okay, guys, I'll submit the link to this book in the description. <laughs> so if you want to <laughs> increase revenue, because I'm going to read this book, I'll put this book to my list of books that I must read. <laughs> and uh, Michael, let's talk <laughs> about uh, this number 26. Can you unhide what 26 means? Uh, I mean, like it's calculation, the average data, anything about 26. <laughs> yeah. So the, the reason 26 came to became the number, the rule of, right, is that I, when I looked at the most, the, the KPIs that were directly linked to revenue, okay, each of these, if you increase your traffic by, you know, say even 10%, you should, if your conversion rate and your close rate are the same, you should see 10% more, right? So when I when I found these KPIs versus KPIs like likes and engagement and even click-throughs, none of those directly apply to your revenue. They are indicators, early indicators of possible revenue, but they're not direct. You have to have, have traffic, you have to have conversions, and you have and, and your average revenue per client are all directly tied to your bank account, right? So when we when, when I was writing the book, it's like, okay, now I have these three KPIs, but now what? How much should we increase? So I would I, so basically just re, uh, reverse engineer the math to say doubling revenue is easy for us to recognize, right? 
Like if I say you're right now, you're making a hundred thousand dollars and I say, you're going to double your revenue. You can immediately go, that's $200,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we can understand the goal immediately, then the rest of it falls into place. Because if I just told you, yeah, I can increase your revenue by 10 times and you're making $125,000 if, and I, or I said a hundred, 126 times, that just seems like out of reach. So I was like, okay, let's do something that is feasible. Let's double things. And 26% is not a lot when you break it down to each of those KPIs. 26% more traffic. So say you're getting a thousand people in traffic. If you if you only need 260 more people to come to your website in a month, that's pretty approachable, right? So mm -hmm. it all came down to that we were looking for percentage that we wanted to increase because if you don't have a goal, then you're just flying blind, right? So the goal was to double and I reverse engineered it to find out that those three KPIs increased by 26% got you that double of the revenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Love it, love it. Uh, Michael, I want to ask you about uh, creating high quality content. You know, it's broad question, but uh, I found that book offers usually have another vision how to create this uh, high quality content because they they can share stories. You know, uh, all mm -hmm. books uh, consist of stories and it's interesting to read. And once I spoke with Jim Edwards, uh, he worked in Business Insider 10 mm -hmm. years. Uh, uh, he started on this company from scratch. Then company was sold for $500 million, uh, good success. And he told me success of Business Insider depends on creating non-boring content so business insider found the way how to engage the audience in b2b niche because business is boring marketing is boring you know it's not like entertainment but business insider knows how to entertain audience uh, and um, um, i love uh, reading stories uh, but i see when website owners usually highlight features a lot of features you know but apple uh, doesn't do it. I remember when Tim Cook shared uh, three stories about a new Apple Watch. I, I bought three mm -hmm. pairs after that because, you know, uh, I bought for me, for my son, for my wife, because these guys probably kill me, you know, if I buy only for myself. But, you know, uh, what info <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> when Tim Cook shared three stories, how this Apple Watch can decide my problems, can simplify my life can uh, improve the quality of life. And I got the feeling, wow, I want to have it. I want to take it. Uh, and he didn't share features that probably other smartwatches have, you know, Samsung, I don't mm -hmm. know, name them. So can you tell how to share stories to create the feeling that some products can decide your problems <laughs> or your customers' problems? Right. So I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head when we talk about problems, right? Problems are very interesting to the the person who has the problem, right? If you don't have a problem that somebody's talking about, you're going to tune out, right? So if mm -hmm. somebody's talking about headache medicine and you're just not prone to headaches, you're not going to tune in, right? So understanding yeah. the problems of your audience that, that happen the most often and revolving your content around the solutions to those problems is going to keep you extremely interesting to, to your potential clients and to your audience, right? And so when you stop becoming a, a solution to their problems, you automatically stop becoming interesting to people. And that's why your audience is coming in out of your lives because we don't always have the same problem. And if they hang out with you long enough and you don't solve any of their problems, they're not gonna be trusting you to solve any other problems, right? And they're gonna be going to other people to find those solutions. So if you can't do it in a reasonable amount of time, then it doesn't matter how interesting you think you're being, they're not getting the value out of what you're you're providing. And that's where, like, when we talk about AI writing and stuff like that, for some things, AI can do really well uh, as far as, like, rudimentary writing, like just the, the, the staple stuff. But when you're talking about content marketing, you're talking about authority marketing. And authority marketing means that you need original thought. And AI does not create original thought. It, it, it basically synthesizes information that's been fed to it in a new and interesting way, okay? <clears throat> so email marketing, email marketers use AI really well. But when you start talking about storytelling and stuff like that, 
they're the AI is only going to be able to take stories that have already been out there, put them in a new order and spit it back out to you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so when you start talking about problem solving, if you're looking at a problem the way that everybody else is looking at it, you are not novel. Right. So I have a very interesting way of approaching search engine optimization. We call it digital engagement optimization because we see more than just the rankings that matter when it comes to SEO. Right. That makes us novel. AI is not going to be able to figure that out. Right. Now, AI could talk about how Michael Bazinski do, does DEO and that he created it back, you know, 11 years ago and dot, dot, dot. But it's not going to sit there and go, what's a new way of doing SEO? It's not going to be able to create. It doesn't invent. And so if you're content marketing, uh, if you are doing content marketing for your business or you're a content marketer, you definitely want to continue to utilize that human aspect and only use AI as an accelerant when you're needing facts or maybe outlines, um, creating context and stuff like that to just help speed up the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You touched AI. You know, it's interesting that that was simple to ignore. Hard today, impossible tomorrow. Yeah, I think AI is a regular tool. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, yeah, I used AI before ChatGPT. Today, I can feel that I use a lot more AI, but I see when content creators overuse AI. So, they use generic prompts how to play guitar, <laughs> how to lose weight. You know, yeah, they get generic uh, answers. I remember when Elon Musk shared on Twitter how he used ChatGPT, uh, he asked hard question. I, I read this question a few times, you know, to understand Elon Musk's point. Uh, then uh, AI replied, uh, you, that was like unique answer, so unique. Uh, and uh, I'm interested about using AI in the right way because I found almost, not almost, everyone, everyone. Uh, I cooperate with many great uh, writers who can post on Forbes, Bloomberg. Investopedia, many other great websites, and all of them use ChatGPT, all of them. And I usually tell them, please, mm -hmm. yes, okay, we can't deny this tool exists, but don't overuse. Please use this tool smart because we need to get a uh, unique answer, unique content, because Google, Google can recognize uh, it's generic, nothing special. And uh, there is no value if it's uh, just uh, rewriting content by AI. So can you tell how to use AI or chat GPT uh, in, in the good way or correct way. <laughs> yeah. So we, so I have a CRM called BuzzHub. You can check that out at buzzhub.biz. And we're utilizing an AI bot in the chat uh, function of our website. Okay. And so when we're, when, when you look at AI and in the content that it, it can re regurgitate is all of the frequently asked questions, right? So the less time that we can uh, utilize to answer questions we've already answered before, the more time we have to create new answers to new questions, right? Or if we're looking at it in content, creating content, you can utilize it in speeding up the writing process, not the writing itself, but the writing process, right? We have to create an outline. We need to create bullet points. We need you know, to understand uh, the infrastructure of a particular particular uh, piece of content, whether it's a blog, maybe it is a book, a chapter to a book, maybe it is just an outline of your next book, all of those things. You can actually ask chat GPT, if I was to write, if I'm this type of person and I was to write on this topic to this type of audience and I wanted to cover this, the, the, these bullet points, dot, 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 in XYZ amount of time, in X, XYZ amount of uh, words, what would the outline look like? Boom, all of a sudden I've got a whole outline, headers, bullet points, all the other things that I that I now have. And then I can start manipulating that to my liking, right? Because what they're going to give me is going to be about 80% of the way there. And that's what AI is really good about. When you're talking about creating things, it can get us 80% there and then we fill in the rest, right? So mm -hmm. I also utilize it when I need to reference facts or Maybe I just need to define something that's common out there, but I want to, I don't know how to word it. So I'll use them and say, like today I was talking about inter, uh, integrated marketing. So integrated marketing has a lot of meaning. So I was like, how would you define integrated marketing? And it gave me a list of 
ways to look at how to in define integrated marketing. I go, yep, this is, I like this. Then I took that, it was about 80% of the way there. And then I reframed it a little bit and it became mine. And then it got plugged into something I was already writing. So it was only a piece of the pie. And so if you look at your, if you look at AI as an optimization tool of your time, you can utilize it really well because you're never letting it replace your voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Valuable, valuable. Okay, let's uh, get back uh, to uh, increasing uh, conversion rate. So I'm interested about uh, crafting the right content for e-commerce pages because, for example, if we take apple.com, very simple, mm -hmm. so simple. You know, I, I open a home page and I see only iPhone, nothing else. I can mm -hmm. find a MacBook, AirPod, Apple Watch because iPhone is responsible for 50% of all sales. So uh, why Apple needs to share something else if app, iPhone can sell a lot? Uh, and uh, I like it, this simple content. A few quotes like make difference, yeah. Nothing special. If I open Amazon, I can see another story. Uh, a lot of information, uh, I mean, like details, uh, reviews, uh, pictures. Yeah, probably after uh, using Amazon, I don't need to go to any other website because, yeah, I can find everything on one single page. So can you tell how to find the balance? Because simplicity is important. And uh, having a lot of information, enough information for customers, important. So, uh, and I see this struggle when content creators don't know uh, how, how long to write, uh, uh, where to pay attention, how to choose, I mean, like important and uh, skip less important. So any tips about that? So you're, you're pointing to two very good websites out there, both yeah. Billion dollar companies, right? Multi-billion dollar companies. I think one coming up on a trillion, right? So yeah. with Apple, when you go to Apple, you know what you're looking for. You're in a transactional intent. So if you do a search for Apple phone and, or you do a, tra uh, a navigational, what's the what, what, you know website for Apple? And then that takes you to there. You already know what you're looking for. Apple now is saying, okay, 50% of our traffic is looking for our phone. So we're going to put that first and then the rest of the stuff below it. And if you do, you scroll down, you'll always find the rest of the things, yeah. right? And if you don't, and you just click on the phone, you pick out which phone you like, it will let you know, oh, by the way, there's these accessories. You need the air uh, the earbuds and you want, maybe you want an iPad to go along with that, or maybe you needed an air book, dot, 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 right? They're going to, they're going to upsell you, cross sell you and all that other things. Okay. Now let's go over to Amazon. Like you said, there's all these, this, all this information and choices, which is a commercial intent. When we're in the commercial intent, the user is in a commercial intent. They're looking to compare options. And so you, they're, they're in a buying mode. They just don't know who they're buying from. When they're in transactional mode, they're closer to who they are going to be buying from, right? So that's what makes Amazon much more powerful than Apple in that, in that uh, instance due to the fact that, that I don't know exactly what I'm going to buy and I don't know who I'm going to buy it from. Okay, but I, I know that I can type in what I'm looking for. Say it is a uh, Android phone, right? Because if it's not Apple, it's Android. But if it's Android, it could be one of many uh, phones out there, right? So I might go in there and now I can look at all the different options in an Android phone and decide, oh, I like this one. Now, once I like this type, who else, who all sells this? Now I can get down into that transactional because I know what I want to buy. I'm just trying to figure out who I'm going to buy it from. So once they get to a brand that they'll, they'll uh, a service provider they're willing to buy from, and then they start digging in there and they do any other searches on that firm or say it's like, hey, you can buy it from AT&T. Now you're going to go do a search on AT&T. They're now doing transactional uh, searches because they're just making sure that that's who they're going to buy it from. So the complexity comes when you need to have a lot of options, right? And the simplicity comes from when you know th that when they land on that page, they're already a buyer. So you have to find the balance of what their intent is on e each page. So your homepage might have more options if you don't have an iPhone to sell, right? Like Amazon doesn't have the iPhone exclusively to sell, right? You can buy anything there. You could buy a corded phone. 
right? You could buy any type of phone there. You can buy all the accessories. You can do all of those things, right? So when we talk about service-based businesses, there's a balance of information that, that you're trying to translate that you know enough to be able to provide the service, right? So that becomes a commercial intent because I'm like, I'm looking for, say, an SEO provider, okay? I need to show you, if you go to my website, I talk about what SEO is and that how we approach it after that. Because if, if, if the person's coming to you going, I don't even know what SEO is, I'm not gonna buy it. Because if I don't know what it is, I'm not gonna buy it, right? So if I tell them, hey, listen, you wanna use SEO for X, Y, Z, and if you're this type of person, we're the people to help you out with, done, right? And that's gonna increase my conversion rate because I'm telling them what I offer, I'm telling you who I offer it to, and if I can get those two things to click, they're gonna ask for more information. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Love it, love it. Uh, I want to ask about collecting this data. You know, uh, for example, if I'm going to create content, I need to know my audience. Uh, they know products, they don't know. So to find the right balance between Amazon, Apple. Uh, and um, let me share a short story about Jeff Bezos. Once uh, he got a research team and this team asked him to give more time to research about new product. He denied. He told, guys, we have enough data. Let's do it. Let's uh, launch the product. And this product was Alexa. Today, almost all homes in the US have this product. And uh, yeah, and uh, Jeff got enough data. Uh, and uh, I spoke with a few data experts and they told me over data might hurt than help <laughs> because uh, uh, companies don't know what to take, what to do, uh, and uh, that's why we have this, uh, uh, I don't remember exactly, uh, study that uh, customers usually usually implement 40% of all recommendations. So if you give them a lot of data, they don't know what to take, how to create this content. Uh, so can you tell how to uh, collect enough data i mean like and mm -hmm. probably use intuition because intuition can help as well if you have this experience any tips about enough data <laughs> so data is interesting because uh there are there's a saying that says you know data is usually driven by statistics right you're, you're looking mm -hmm. for statistical data and so they there's a saying that says there's lies there are damn lies and then there's statistics Right. Meaning that you can make statistics say whatever you want. So when you're looking at data, you want to make sure that you are looking at the right data first. Right. Yeah. And then you need to say, OK, what at what level am I speaking to this data? OK, if I just need generalities, the minimum amount of data is all I need. Right. I can use the 80 20 rule for most things without even understanding the actual data, the actual mm -hmm. set, the whole thing. Right. Yeah. So what. What Jeff Bezos is is basically telling us in this this story here is that listen, sometimes just enough data is enough because it's not going to tell us the whole story until you dive into the big stuff, right? When you're selling, the less data the better. You want the most impactful data, and you never want to really share more than three pieces of data at a time. Okay, so if you're sitting there saying that, hey, so my, the rule of 26 is, is exactly that. When I was able to boil it down to three KPIs and we could focus on three sets of data, it makes it a lot easier to consume. So if you just think about it, what are the, mo the top three pieces of data that support whatever argument you're having? That's enough data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting, interesting. And Michael, let's talk about... Uh something that i usually do uh you know i made a lot of mistakes in my life i keep doing them you know because i don't know another way how to learn because we usually start from best practices generic strategies then we can adapt to change mm -hmm. something to find what actually will work for us so uh, let's talk about mistakes can you list mistakes that companies still do in aco and your tips how to find another way. I mean, like uh, what kind of mistakes we can avoid? Because, yeah, I think some mistakes we can avoid, some mistakes we can learn from them. So sure. any tips about that? <laughs> so, I, you know, in SEO, 
the biggest thing is that people try to, and we, we alluded to it earlier to, in the conversation, they try mm -hmm. to rank for keywords that are not profitable for them. Yeah. They look at the SEM, in SEO specifically, um, you know, they look at the SEO, uh, ra, SEM rush, they look at the AH refs, they look at the Neil Patels, they, they look at the rock stars, right? And it's like, guys, they're the rock stars. I'm not, not that guy. Right. I've been doing it a long time, but I, I am more a local business guy. So I'm not trying to, you know, get the net, be the next uh, Neil Patel. I'm looking to impact as many people specifically where I can put my eyes on them and do that. Right. So that intent in SEO is really important to focus on. And so the biggest problem is that they, is that people get too broad in their keywords, get granular, long keywords, three to five key, uh, words minimum, right? And the, the, they say the longer the keyword, the further down the sales funnel they are, right? And the sales, the sales cycle they are. So that's one. The second thing though, I want to talk about conversion rate optimization because there's a lot of people out there that do really well with SEO. They get all that traffic, but they get zero conversions and zero conversions means all that SEO is a waste. And so the biggest problem I see, and I, I covered it in my book, but one of the biggest, the biggest problems I see is that people talk about themselves, especially in the service-based businesses. Yeah. Okay. And products are just as bad. They're feature rich, right? If you go to, um, if you go to uh, Amazon, it's all about the features, right? But if you have a unique or a novel problem or a unique and novel tool to solve a common problem, search is going to get you like, how do I solve this problem? Right. But then you turn around and you get to a website and it talk, doesn't talk about the problem anymore. It just talks about features. You've missed your opportunity to suck them in to the solution. You have to show the solution. So when we're talking about service-based businesses, you hear a lot of I, we, and us versus you and your, you are probably this, your problems are look like this. We can help you do it this way right? The, all of that is very, very important and to, to be able to make that switch, flip the coin and say, we're going to speak to you directly. And if you don't connect with it, you're probably not the right prospect, which is good. You don't need dead prospects calling you and wasting your time. You're losing money every time you talk to somebody who is not a qualified prospect. So you can do that by talking to the solutions that you solve, talking to the directly to the profitable prospects that you want to talk to. And then that lets the users self uh, eliminate themselves when they're not qualified. Yeah, nice. You know, uh, I see the same issue on LinkedIn. You know, when someone asks me, please check out my profile. I can't promote. <laughs> and when I open, I see selfish, selfish profile who don't, who doesn't care about uh, customers, about others, uh, who highlights that he he's great an expert. Neil Patel can do it. You know, Neil Patel can share that he's a student in this life. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> but if you self-proclaim expert, I don't know customers will want to cooperate with you. Customers need someone who can decide their problems that's it you know mm -hmm. so if you can't decide it mm -hmm. if you can tell on your profile that you can do it yeah it, it doesn't work okay uh michael uh you know uh, what i found um that i usually get uh, high results uh, with customers who understand seo so if they don't uh, that means uh, i usually tell them take my course learn from lily ray uh mike phillips jeff Coyle, many other great experts um go to youtube google find other courses just learn understand the basic then we can go ahead like a cohesive team uh, uh and we usually get results uh, with clients who understand because they know why we need to create high quality content how to use pr link building and let's imagine you started today from scratch without any experience, knowledge, skills. You didn't write this book. Uh, you started in SEO. It's your first day. What will you do today to learn more about SEO? So we, um, I, I've answered this problem with a platform that I have called Dizio.biz, D-I-Z-Y-O dot B-I-Z. 
And it, if I had to start all over, I would find a platform like Dizio because learning Diz, uh, learning SEO as a business owner is a waste of your time. Period. End of story. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. when we're first starting out, we might not be able to hire people like you and me. Okay. And that's okay. But you got to get started because SEO is a game of time. And the longer you wait, the longer that it's going to take to get those results. And if there's anybody in your direct, if there's a direct competitor who is getting ahead of you, it's going to get harder and harder to catch them as time goes on. So we got to start SEO as soon as possible. So I created this platform called Dizio that basically allows people to do SEO without actually learning SEO. Pretty cool, huh? Um, it walks mm -hmm. you through everything. It tells you what to do. And if you want to learn more about it, yeah, we give you that information on the platform. But most of my clients that use our, our Dizio platform, all they're trying to do is get the job done. And we even have AI in there to help them do a lot of the things I talked to you about, creating the outlines, creating some headers and stuff like that, that can get tedious if you're not a writer. So we are like, hey, we're going to give you those shortcuts, 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 and get that in there. And this at least gets that, that local business owner that can't afford an SEO company, a tool that they can utilize and, and even hand it off to somebody. You know, if they're an owner, they can hand it off to an employee that maybe is a little more techie or maybe who somebody who likes to write and, and is interested in that kind of stuff. Boom, it's there, right? That's what I would do if I was starting from scratch again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting, interesting. And... Okay, final question about the future. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, I will. I want to ask you take your crystal ball <laughs> and tell me what kind of future will be in SEO because you know I check out my crystal ball. It doesn't work because when I bought uh, crypto, when uh, stock, uh, some stock assets, and yeah, I failed <laughs> and I got it. My crystal ball do doesn't work. Uh, that's why I love it. I love it because, yeah, we have unpredictable future. So many things can surprise us. AI surprised uh, on this year. Mm -hmm. So tell your forecast about the future and how we can adapt today to this possible future. So my prediction is this. Technology is going to continue to progress. It's going to continue yeah. to evolve. But the human brain only evolves at a certain pace mm -hmm. fundamentals of marketing have not changed over the last few hundred years if not millennia what drives us and our uh what we call the lizard brain that what basically it's just it's that thought, thought process that happens in the back of your brain you don't even ever think about it because it's it's your natural response those things right there have changed extremely uh, little. Okay. Now has our attention spans been shortened? Uh, yes, but the fundamentals of the messaging have not. And so I predict that we are actually going to see a retrograde of how much technology people are going to want in their lives on an hour by hour basis. They'll have technology in their lives because it's around us everywhere. Right. But they are going to be looking for the authentic connection with other human beings because that's going to become more and more novel the more we utilize technology. And so my prediction is the more real you are today and stay that way, the better you're going to be tomorrow. That's my prediction. Yeah, love it. Awesome. I agree. I agree. Completely agree. And I think, you know, for example, when people can tell that SEO will be dead, a hundred percent. SEO will be dead. No doubts about that, but it takes time. <laughs> I don't know how long does it take yeah. because everything has the end. It You still have a lot of time. A few decades probably. Yeah. I, I can't predict, but SEO, minimum SEO, will, SEO is going to be around for at least another generation though. There's another, there's another generation of marketers that will utilize SEO yeah. and there will always be it be, as long as people are looking for things, there's always going to be something called search uh, search optimization. Whether it's an engine yeah. or a, a bot or whatever it looks like, there's going to be something that has to be optimized for that search. And as long as information is what people are looking for, you're always going to have a search engine to look for that information. And, if, for, and so for as long as that infrastructure is in place, SEO will always be a thing. 
Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting, for example, marketers on TV and radio didn't lose their jobs. They adapted to digital. <laughs> if you have experience yeah. with SEO, you can adapt to any channel because SEO teaches how to create high quality content. Uh, it's not like how to rank on Google, how to create high quality content, how to increase website speed, how to uh, earn authoritative links that can help users, people, not only search engines, you know, search engines yeah. are looking for these links that can help people. You know, today it's not a good idea to uh, get back links for the sake of ranking in Google. You need to help people. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. SEO, yeah, it's, it, it's a huge foundation for yeah. any marketing channel. Michael, it's a big pleasure yeah. to get in my show, to learn from you. Thanks a lot for your time, all your valuable insights. I'm going to read your book. I'm pretty sure that my audience will read as well. Tell us the best way how to keep learning from you, how to reach out to you, how to follow you. Yes, uh, you can look, uh, You can follow us at You Are Buzzworthy on LinkedIn, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. Uh, you can check out uh, our company at buzzworthy.biz and the book is at ruleof26.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Guys, you can find the links in the description below. Listen to us on Apple, Google, Spotify. Thanks again for your time, Michael. A big All pleasure. Right. Welcome back anytime to share more valuable insights. I love oh. it, guys. I, I recommend to anyone to follow Michael to read his book because you can see a lot of value. Okay, love you. See you. All right. Thank you.